that a little better some would say it's worse but we'll uh, we'll go with it here good morning uh, welcome to paradise united methodist church i'm your pastor in paradise rob Ernest. good to have you here this morning uh, good to have folks on uh, facebook live with us this morning uh, as well give us a thumbs up or a, a comment if you will let us know that that you are with us this morning uh, in your bulletin this morning you should have a special sunday envelope and a, um, I'm not exactly what, sure what you call this, uh, a little flyer thing, th thingy, flyer thingy, uh, explaining uh, United Methodist Student Day, uh, which was actually last Sunday, but we're extending it to this Sunday as well, so that you will have an opportunity to contribute. What is United Methodist Student Day, you ask? It's one of our special Sundays in the United Methodist Church, uh, which we um, uh, help to fund uh, we don't fund this through our regular apportionments. 100% of this funding goes to United Methodist Student Day. It's a way to, as it explains here, a way to invest in our students for more, more than 100 years. It was actually the very first special Sunday initiated by the uh, United Methodists back in the day. This is to support United Methodist students uh, worldwide in achieving their educational goals, no matter uh, what they, they might be, especially for scholarship programs in our 
um, uh, seminaries uh, across the United States. So if you have an opportunity today, if you would uh, drop in an extra five, 10, 20, 50, $100 bill in this envelope, okay, or write a check there too, and this will be sent to the uh, district office and uh, will be distributed um, worldwide uh, after that. This is not uh, in lieu of your tithes and offering. This is in addition to your tithes and, uh, and offerings. So uh, bear that in mind. <coughs> As Nancy did this morning, I'll give a special shout out to our men's group uh, called the Amen, uh, which meets every Saturday, uh, every first Saturday uh, at 8 a.m. And uh, we have... Um, uh, the first thing we do is, of course, eat, and we thank uh, Shauna and Tracy and uh, these folks up here for providing that uh, with us. But uh, yesterday we had a we had a great meeting. Ken presented a, had a great presentation on uh, uh, the Lakota tribe in uh, South Dakota. We had uh, AED training. Homer's daughter Kim came in and did some AED training. What does AED actually stand for? Do you know? We don't know. Well, what is it? Automatic external, defibr automatic external defib defibrillator. I can't even say it, but that's, we had training on it yesterday. So we kind of know what to do. We found out that it, it, uh, it basically tells you what to do. So uh, we do have one. We had some training on that, and that was uh, very awesome. Uh, then we went out, and, and we moved um, a lot of Nancy stuff from one place to another. And, and I'm pretty sore this morning. Uh, but we, it, was, it was a good time, and uh, we, we got a lot uh, accomplished. Then, right after that, the Paradise Rubies met, so we had, uh, we had some interaction there. I didn't get any of the cookies, though. I understand there were cookies involved. Did, we, we didn't, we didn't get the, any of the cookies, so we'll, we'll have to talk about that later. <clears throat> but I, I bring that out because, you know what? Uh, church doesn't always just happen here. On Sunday morning, it happens, it happens out there in the family center when we have cookie exchanges. It happens at Nancy's house when we sit down and eat chili, which was, by the way, awesome. Thank you for the chili. And, and sh cookies there. And bless, bless, that, uh, bless that move. Um, church doesn't just happen here on Sunday mornings. It happens in community. And the more that we can get involved in these type of community <laughs> activities... Uh, our, our faith increases. That's called means of grace. We have increased means of grace the more often that we meet in community in those types of situations. We get to know each other better uh, in that regard. So this, this isn't just church right here. It's also church in, uh, in our uh, Tuesday morning prayer group. That's church when we go and, and we move furniture and we smash Bill's finger in, in, in any of the moves that we make. That's, we, we get to hear various words said that uh, <laughs> that we don't we hear said often here but that's that's called building uh building church and community as well so i urge you to um latch on to a small group that we're trying to um uh, bring more of those into fruition uh, here latch on to one of those and find out what it's like to build faith in community let's uh prepare our hearts and minds for worship with the prayer of preparation would you pray with me this morning Gracious God, you are an awesome God. We praise you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to be in worship this morning with you and with uh, these in this faith community. We ask, dear Lord, for the presence of your Holy Spirit to be within us and a part of us as we glorify you and only you at this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's begin our worship this morning with a Christmas carol. How about that? Hark the herald angels sing. It's 240 in your United Methodist hymnal. Let's stand as we are able.
you to remain standing for our um, uh, call to worship and our Advent candle lighting at this time. I'm going to ask, we're doing this with our special groups uh, this year, I'm going to ask all the men to come up at this time if, uh, if you are able to do that. And uh, Homer, bring one of those lighters with you in the back, one of the, one of the candle, big candle lighter things. <laughs> all the guys, you are technically all members of the Amen, okay? Even if you haven't made it to a meeting, we're, we're counting you uh, as a as an, uh, member of the Amen this morning. I think this will work right here. Who would, who would, I think we should have probably our, either our oldest member or our youngest member light this candle. I don't think probably our oldest member is going to own up to being the oldest member, so maybe we should have the youngest member do that, should we? You can't get the, I know, after yesterday's lifting, we can't get our arm up that high. All right. Up here, Evan. Hold on to this. Let's go ahead, and, and uh, we need to light one of the purple ones anyway, which, we, you know, go ahead and light that first, as we are lighting the candle of peace here this morning, so, so keep that uh, flame lit. Would you join me in our, our uh, call to worship? The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. The light grows gradually brighter as we move through Advent together. The candle of hope already burns bright. Today we light the candle of peace. So have you light this one right here, Evan? <coughs> all right, good job. The coming Christ desires us all to thrive, patiently wanting us to turn from the ways of sin and death. As we wait for the coming of the Prince of Peace, we want to be ready. Seeking a straight path, we light this candle to guide our steps. Together we prepare the way and strive to lead lives of holiness, goodness, and peace. Amen. And would you remain standing? Let's turn to uh, hymn number 218. It came upon a midnight clear. Thank you, guys. <coughs>
Affirmation of Faith is the Apostles' Creed, 881 in your hymnal or on the screens. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and set it at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you to all who helped put this uh, particular worship service together. Uh, it takes, it takes a, a lot to get me organized. I know that's, that's a fact, so we appreciate everybody who, uh, who plays and sings and pushes buttons and, and um, thaws out bread and pours juice and arranges flowers, puts up trees. We've got a lot going on up here today, don't we? But uh, we appreciate that. It's, uh, it's, it's great to... Uh, to work together in this way. This is a time when we take a few moments to take a deep breath and relax for just a moment, to take a, a brief time of meditation, of, uh, of silent prayer, to um, uh, think about those who possibly want to be with us this morning but can't because of um, illness or uh, pain, which they may be experiencing in some way. Um, uh, think about those who are on our prayer request list who have uh, uh, requested that we think about them in, uh, in our prayer time. Um, if you are on our pastor's prayer team, you know you receive these, this information every week. If you have someone you'd like to extend to our, our prayer team, please let me know with a, a prayer request card um, or write it on the bulletin, tear it off and put it in my pocket as you go out. If you just tell me, I'm going to forget. So you have to write it down. Uh, so do that. We'll pass it along to our, to our prayer team. Uh, at this time, let's uh, move into a time of silent prayer. Lord, in the midst of this busy time, when we are in the rush to Christmas, you burst into our lives with the promise of something new. Open our hearts and spirits to the glorious possibilities of hope and peace to come. Help us to prepare our lives to receive you. We thank you for all the blessings you pour on us and for the privilege we have in sharing these blessings with others. Be with us all this day and all these days that we may serve you better by helping others in need. We lift up to you now all of those around us who may be suffering this day in mind or body or spirit. Heal them, we ask, with your healing touch. 
Comfort them with your peace. Guide them with the hope of Advent as we give them to you now with our voices. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. 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 Father, we lift these to you now who have been given with our voices to your throne. We ask for your mercy and your healing touch to be upon them. For your arms of peace to surround them, for your hands of comfort to enfold them. We ask, dear Lord, in the name of the one who taught us this prayer, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> Continue this time of prayer with our offertory prayer by the people. This is a little different than the prayers that we've just prayed because this is your prayer. I don't know your prayer life or your prayer habits or what you do if you pray every day or don't pray at all or once a week or whatever, but here is an opportunity because this prayer is written in first person. This is actually you praying. So let's pray this prayer together. I delight in your love and salvation, Lord. There could be no greater gifts than these. I will gladly serve you in holiness and righteousness. I offer myself. I offer all that you have provided me. May this offering I bring be used to bring peace to your world and light to those who dwell in darkness. For it is in the name of Jesus that it is given. Amen. <coughs> And you may be seated. We have a special for you this morning coming from our cantata. Um, we stole the uh, name, the three tenors, <coughs> from, who is it, Pavarotti, and there's a couple of other Italian guys who were the three tenors. We're just calling ourselves three tenors, okay, as, so as not to, not to steal their name. So... This is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
until the Son of God appeared. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to Disperse the gloomy clouds of night And death's dark shadows put to flight Rejoice, rejoice Shall come to thee, O Israel. Thank you guys that was fun <laughs> and uh, well we need to have a kids message here this morning don't we if you are a um, youth at heart if you are youthful if there are some youthful bones in your body if you're short if you're little if you wear shorts if you've ever been young before if you'd like to come up for the, the uh, kids time please do so at this time <clears throat> You want me to sit there? You don't want Lexi to sit by him? Okay. Well, I really need to, I need to kind of, why don't you scoot down? Let me get right here, okay? All right. <clears throat> Anybody else like to come? There are treats involved. <clears throat> All right. So, oh, we have mom here too, so this is a good question. I'll, I'll throw it out there, but it's kind of for Lexi. But if you want to answer or not, but do you, do, do you always keep your room clean? Is your room always clean? <laughs> 
<laughs> nice and clean. Oh, yeah, all the time. Huh? All the time? I'll, I'll, we'll just throw it out for all the, all the guys up here. Room clean. Huh? Do a little, do a little mopping and the broom sweeping and dusting, dust bunnies under the bed or anything like that. I'm still learning. Okay, we're we're learning that. Okay, I, that I you need a that you have to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you know, uh, um, if you knew that someone was visiting you uh, who was really important, maybe this afternoon. Uh, was coming over, would you maybe make an effort to go in the room and do a little extra cleaning? Yeah. yeah. All right. Maybe so. You know, my wife is a very good housekeeper. There's clean and then there's Donna clean. <laughs> you ever known somebody like that? Uh, yeah. And whenever my, my sisters came up uh, a couple of months ago and visited, so there was cleaning involved. That's when she drug out this stuff right here. Do you have one of these in your house anywhere? Uh, I th always thought our house was pretty clean, you know? Then she said, no, not clean enough. We got to do all this stuff, okay? We, we have to do the pledge, and we have to do the comet, and we have to do the windows, and then we have to have the, the broom, and we have to have the mop, and we have to have, here's the thing for the, for the dust bunnies, okay? You have to have all that. Are you familiar with any of this stuff? All right, okay, you know it. So there's clean, and then there's Donna clean. This is clean for, like, company, okay? Reg My sisters aren't really company, but they are to Donna. What would happen if maybe a king or a queen were coming to your house? Do you think there would be extra cleaning going on? Maybe a little something extra done, right? Okay, well, that's kind of what our... Our lesson is about this morning is when a king is coming. Because there was a guy, his name was John T. Baptist, and uh, he, he said, you need to, John T. Baptist, that was his name, John T. And he came and, uh, and he said, prepare your house, prepare your hearts, prepare your road, because guess who's coming? King is coming. And he said, this is something that you have to do. How would we, we know how to clean our homes and clean our rooms. How would we prepare, how would we clean our hearts or our lives? Not a rhetorical question. This is a real question. How would you, how would you prepare your hearts? How would you clean your hearts? Hmm? Well, repent of, repent, of sin. Repent, of things. repent, you can repent of your sins, you can say sorry for, for all this stuff I've done, and then try to live a better life, try to live according to what the king says, and, and the king is Jesus, so try to be more like Jesus, prepare your own life, prepare your way, clean your heart, clean your room, and clean your house, all right? That's what John T. Baptist said. We'll talk more about him later this morning. All right, let's have a prayer, shall we? Can you help me with this? Dear God, Dear God you're, awesome. you're awesome. Praise you for this day. Thank you for John T. Who showed us how to prepare the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now's a treat. Now you can have a treat. <laughs> you were looking for cleaning tips? Sorry, I don't have any of those. Talk to my wife. Here you are, young lady. You <laughs> the cleaning tip she has for me is to get out of the house. <laughs> Thank you guys for, for volunteering to, to be with us up here. <clears throat> Our scripture this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. If you want to compare, this is also in Luke. <clears throat> Matthew 3, verses 1 through 12. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. 
This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him and all the region along the Jordan. And they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestors. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I'm not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <coughs> Father, we ask for your strength and your guidance this morning. We ask that you would place words in my mouth which would please you. We ask that you would sit beside us wherever we might be this morning to hear your word and to understand it. In Jesus' name, amen. Our last full-time appointment was in LeCompton, Kansas, <clears throat> uh, west of here. And during our last summer there, we were privileged to experience firsthand the miraculous work of the Douglas County, Kansas Road Department. They spent uh, most of that last summer resurfacing much of what is known as Farmer's Turnpike. Um, that's a stretch of a county road. It's about eight miles long between Lecompton and Lawrence, Kansas. And it was pretty frustrating at times for those of us who had to travel that road almost daily, but the process was really remarkable if you look, look back on it. You know, I'm sure there are lots of very smart people who knew what they were doing when they planned and researched a very long time before they attempted such an undertaking as that. Even so, there were a couple of glitches along the way. I recall one day as I waited for the follow me car. You know the follow me car? What's that called? The pilot, pilot car. It's the follow me car. <laughs> it was, I was waiting for it to come gather up our line so we could pull out and and go. And there was a group of workers all dressed in their neon orange vests, you know, and they were crowded around what looked like a very large hole near the driveway culvert. And two or three of them were leaning on their shovels, sipping cold drinks, and a couple more were down on one knee smoking cigarettes. And all of them were talking and pointing at this very large hole by the side of the road. And eventually I caught a glimpse of what they were looking at. And first I saw the glint of the sun off of this shovel blade. And then I could see the top of a, of a guy's head. And finally I could see that there was this one guy down in that hole digging for all that he was worth while the other men watched and pointed and smoked. <clears throat> that, my friends was John the Baptist of the Farmer's Turnpike Resurfacing Project. <laughs> While everyone else was, was standing around, talking and smoking and pointing, he seemed to be the only person who was preparing the way for us to drive smoothly and safely down Farmer's Turnpike. But as we all know, he could not do that alone. Although it appeared that this guy wasn't getting much help on that particular day. We know it takes a lot of work by a lot of people to build a road. <clears throat> it takes those skilled and explosives to flatten 
mountains and hills. It takes those skilled in architecture and bridge building to span valleys and streams. It takes those skilled in operating heavy machinery to straighten curves and make rough ways smooth. You know, in the course of history, we've built a lot of roads. We've built roads of commerce. We've built roads of conquest. But the road John the Baptist wanted to build, it was a spiritual road a road by which we could access the truth and safely arrive at the grace of Jesus Christ. But it, was, it wasn't going to be easy, the building of this particular road. Now, to give you a little backstory about John T., he was the son of Zechariah, who was a priest in the temple of Jerusalem, and his mother was Elizabeth, the cousin of Jesus' mother, Mary. So, for all intents and purposes, Jesus and John were second cousins. Jesus and John may have played together as children because, as you know, our cousins are our very first friends. Needless to say, Jesus and John had a, had a lot of uh, common history. John knew what Jesus was all about, and Jesus knew what John was all about. John was a pretty different cat. History tells us John lived off the land. He ate whatever he could find, locusts and berries and honey. He drank no wine. He talked very plainly, and he was completely independent. Matthew recalls that the prophet Isaiah, when he describes John the Baptist as the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. That is from Isaiah. John's teaching, and it really wasn't teaching. It was more preaching. John preached he preached of repentance, and he preached of judgment. To John's way of thinking, preparing the way of the Lord meant a lot of blasting and bulldozing. And you know what? He was just the right guy for the job. He would have fit very well in with the Douglas County Road Department. As in the Farmer's Turnpike Resurfacing Project, there is a reason why a new road is built, believe it or not. Usually it's because the old road is inadequate in some way. Maybe it's in such bad shape that traffic doesn't move very well on it anymore. Maybe it's full of potholes. It's been patched and repatched and won't take any more patches. Maybe it's become dangerous. There are too many accidents happening on it. Something's got to be done. Well, the old road to salvation was kind of like that. Before the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the road of salvation came through the laws of the covenant God made for the people of Israel, handed down through Moses. But this road to salvation had become difficult to travel. It was filled with potholes and dangerous curves. It was so loaded with rituals placed there by the religious leaders of the day that the reasons behind God's laws had lost their meaning to many of the Jews. They had begun worshiping the rituals and the laws themselves instead of worshiping the God who had given them the rituals and the laws in the first place. John's job was to prepare for a new way of thinking, a new road to salvation. But first, he had to blow up the old road. Now, this construction project would take some blasting, and guess what? John T. was just the right guy. He's the one that had the dynamite. John was fearless. His convictions were unequal. No one had heard preaching like this before. John wasn't one of those who would hem and haw around. His message was strong and as straight as an auger bit. His inspiration had been gained through years of communing and meditating with the one true living God. He would preach to the average people and tell them the truth as he saw it. And he wouldn't soften or change that truth when more powerful persons appeared in his congregation. He dealt with the Roman soldiers as directly as he dealt with the Jewish commoners. He gave no favors. He asked none from the tax collectors or any of the rich and influential people around. When the scribes and the Pharisees, the respected teachers and law keepers of the day, came from Jerusalem down to the Jordan to hear him, they received no deference from John. Quite the contrary, if you read. 
He met him with a hearty rebuke, which must have felt like a slap on the face to him. He said, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? In essence, he was saying, you're all just a bunch of snakes. John was the hero to the commoners, and he possessed a quality that all heroes seemed to have. John had absolutely no fear. Ordinary folks felt safe with him. They loved John for the enemies he didn't care to make, and he made a lot of them. They loved him because he dared to blow up the old road and to make room for a new one. But the Pharisees, they, they said to him, but, but, but we have Abraham as our father. We have history on our side. To which John replied, and I'm paraphrasing here, don't talk to me about Abraham. God could raise up children to Abraham from these lifeless stones. John didn't need a history lesson. Boom! There goes one of those mountains blasted away. Don't tell me about your roots. Tell me about your fruits. What have you done for the Lord lately? Boom! There goes another bump in the road. Even now, John said, the axe is laid to the root of the tree. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. If you're not working for the Lord, you're just taking up space. At least maybe you'll make good kindling. Boom! Another rock removed. But to his credit, not only could John plant a stick of dynamite, he could also drive a grater. He could smooth out the rough spots in his message. From the beginning, the bedrock of this new salvation road was, in fact, love and honesty and consideration and kindness. Through his relationship with God, John knew that in these fundamentals, if they were neglected, all the efforts at any other spiritual development would be insecure at the best. After the blasting, if the foundation wasn't laid properly, as you know, the road's not going to last very long. In Luke's version of this story, we find John telling the multitudes that they should share what they had with the poor, not to steal or lie or harm their neighbors. Like a herald proclaiming the arrival of a king, John's mission was to prepare the hearts and minds of those who heard his message for the arrival of the Messiah. John was telling them and us that in order to receive the Lord and his salvation, we got to do a little bit of road work. The first thing that we got to do is open up the road to salvation is to invite Jesus Christ to lead us in this work. Only with Jesus' help can we clear those roadways which have maybe grown up with weeds of neglect, whatever that neglect might be, neglect of oneself, neglect of one's spouse, neglect of one's family or friends. Only with Jesus' help can bridges be built across those valleys. Do you have any valleys between us and our neighbors? Only with Jesus' help can we level those mountains and hills which keep us from seeing God. Have you got any of those? Hills of pride and selfishness, mountains of greed and self-indulgence. Only Jesus can roll out the rough spots for those who will follow us down this long but glorious salvation road. Only Jesus can make our crooked road straight and narrow. I don't know about you, but my road to salvation is still under construction. <clears throat> I know I'm going to make it to my destination, but I sure need to help filling up some of those potholes along the way. A few bridges are going to need to be built. A couple of mountains blasted away. But you know what? Anytime that I've got a question or a concern or a need to talk to about my road to salvation, I just get down on my knees and I give my personal crew chief a call. Maybe you haven't started on your road just yet. Maybe your road's almost finished. But wherever you are on your project, 
He's always open for business. That line of communication is always there. We've got the best salvation construction engineer in the business. Did you know that? That would be Jesus Christ. That's what John is telling us in this message this morning. He offers very few soothing words of compromise or compassion to us. Now, I realize that this isn't a very peace-filled message on this Sunday of peace with all this talk of blasting and paving and construction. But this work order from John T. is pretty clear. The king is coming. Prepare the way for the Lord. Don't just stand there leaning on your shovel. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Dear God, as we move deeper into this meaningful season of Advent, this Sunday of peace, we are reminded of the message of John to be prepared for you, to prepare ourselves for the peace and the understanding which comes only through knowing you, to prepare our own road of salvation so that not only we may take it smoothly, but that those who know us and see us may also know of the way to you. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to celebrate Holy Communion this morning with John T. in mind as we continue to celebrate this Sunday of peace during this special Advent season. I'll ask you to turn in your United Methodist hymnal to page 12 as I prepare the table for you. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. Failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will, broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. I hope you turn to page 15. In the middle of the page, the great thanksgiving. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. You look for that day when justice shall roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. When nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to be a light to the nations. You scatter the proud in the imagination of their hearts. 
and have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You put down the mighty from their thrones and exalt those of low degree. You fill the hungry with good things, and the rich you send away. Your own son came among us as a servant to be Emmanuel, your presence with us. He humbly humbled himself in obedience to your will and freely accepted death on a cross. By the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, and he gave thanks to God, and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples. He said, take this and eat this, all of you. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this. So when the supper was over, he gave thanks to God. And he gave it to his disciples. He said, take this and drink this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant, which covers the sins of many, the sins of the past, sins of the present, your sins of the future. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours. Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Would you help me? Body of Christ. And the blood of Christ. I believe there are, um, I can only come up with go-go cups right now, <laughs> prepackaged elements at this back table. If you are not comfortable with receiving the elements from, from us here, you're welcome to receive those if you like. Um, we have a, a few guests here this morning. This is an open table. Uh, this is not our table, this is not a Methodist table, this is not a Protestant table or, or a Baptist table. This is, this is God's table, and everyone's welcome at this table. Look at all those who sat around the table at the First Supper. Judas was there, Peter was there, all the sinners were there. Uh, we, we are not worthy to receive this meal. If, if, uh, if, if that was a prerequisite if we, to being worthy, uh, we would have a lot of bread left over because none of us are. But we, none of us are worthless, and uh, we are worthy in God's sight. The table has been set. The invitation has been given. Would you come? Body of Christ for you, Evan.
good sir. celebration of the table continues all through Advent, not just today. So we will we'll have many table, table celebrations. I'm sure you will have many at your uh, family gatherings as well, but uh, this is a, a special one during Advent that we share with you. Thank you for sharing with us today. I've lost my bulletin, so I don't know what the next song is, but uh, oh, it's on the screen. How about that? Technology is wonderful, isn't it? <clears throat> Uh, would you stand with us as we sing our song of invitation? If you would like to uh, be a part of this community of faith uh, by transfer, by profession of faith, if you'd like to find out more about your salvation road, please uh, come talk to me as we stand and sing, O Little Town of Bethlehem. We are rehearsing, the choir is rehearsing uh, in just a few minutes or so. If you'd like to join the choir, it's still not late, because most of us don't know what we're doing anyway. Um, so, so please join us for the choir if you'd like. Our cantata will be December the 18th, I believe. Um, and and we're, we're going to rehearse heavily between now and then to, to make sure. This is our red-headed choir director here. She's a taskmaster, so uh, be, know what you're getting into with that, all right? Would you receive this benediction? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace until we meet again. Amen. Amen. <laughs>